We begin today with that man again. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has officially launched his 2024 presidential bid. Standing before supporters at his Mar-a-Lago estate, the 76-year-old former U.S. president said America's comeback starts now. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. He defended the Republican Party's disappointing performance in last week's midterm elections and his support for losing candidates. He insisted that predictions of a landslide, many of which he himself pronounced on the campaign trail, were always going to be overblown. But Trump is facing pushback from within conservative ranks, and this campaign to secure the Republican Party's presidential nomination will be no cakewalk. First, he has a record now. In 2016, he was running as a candidate with no record in office, so voters could project their hopes and desires on him. His over-the-top promises came with no opportunity for his opponents to point to past shortcomings and failures. That, of course, is no longer the case. Trump defended his record in office last night, including his stewardship of the economy, uh, falsely claiming that he left it in its strongest condition ever. He also applauded his own handling of criminal justice reform. But his opponents within the Republican Party will challenge that record in the competitive race for the party's presidential nomination that is now expected. His repeated promises of infra infrastructure investment never came to a conclusion. And the COVID-19 pandemic, which despite or perhaps because of the president's approach, led to more than a million Americans dying from the virus. Then there is the end of the Trump presidency and his role in the January 6th attack last year on the U.S. Capitol building and his continued entirely false claims that Joe Biden's election was rigged and illegitimate. The midterms demonstrated that millions of American voters rejected more extreme Trump-backed Republican candidates, both for the House and the Senate, and crucially, for lower-level positions in individual states. The legal problems ensnaring Trump are also a big challenge. The former president is currently defending himself against a criminal election-tampering inquiry in Georgia, a civil fraud case targeting his business empire in New York, a defamation lawsuit involving a sexual assault allegation and federal probes into his role in the Capitol attack and his post-presidential handling of classified material. Now with a tussle within Republican Party ranks for the vital support of the donors that will fund presidential campaigns, he is expected to face stiff competition from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, among others. The governor just won an overwhelming re-election victory that suggests, at least in Florida, he is more attuned with his party's core supporters. However, it is still unclear whether or not DeSantis will enter the race. He could emerge as the most prominent pick among the party faithful who are seeking a candidate other than Trump. And DeSantis has already notched up double-digit leads among Republican voters in the latest polls conducted in Iowa, New Hampshire, Florida and Georgia. Those are double-digit leads over Donald Trump. Age could also be a factor. If Trump wins, he would be 78 years old, a touch younger than Joe Biden, who turns 80 in four days' time. But like Biden, whether Trump has the energy to withstand another presidential campaign remains an open question. For more on all of this, we have WEON's US correspondent Susan Terrani joining us from New York. Susan, you are no doubt as bleary-eyed as I am this morning. What did you make of the speech? <laughs> Well, I think if we think about the speech in terms of Donald Trump behind the podium, I think it was Donald Trump at his prime. Uh, we hadn't seen him this way, you know, talking about his achievements 
you know, he was funny, he was somewhat for his supporters, charismatic, he talked about his foreign policy and domestic achievements, and he sort of put forth a vision he has uh, for 2024 and the future. And at least for those that were looking uh, to see where he stands, I think it was clear that Donald Trump is still the father of the America First agenda. Now, we can argue whether or not that is what voters want at this point, or they want to move forward, even Republicans, and move past the Donald Trump baggage or not. And then we could also ask whether or not this is the Donald Trump that we're going to get again moving forward or not but i think he stuck to the message he talked about his achievements he talked about the vision that he has he talked about the american dream glory hope um and he didn't go back to those comments that he made the past few years about the elections being stolen um you know other accusations that sort of dragged him and those around him down um either so you know, this was a version of Donald Trump that won in 2016, but then you can argue that this is not 2016 anymore. There are other candidates, but I think um, for those that support Donald Trump, they were very happy with it. And I think that Joe Biden is going to have a tough time if he does decide to run, to run against this version of Donald Trump. Yeah, I was struck last night, Susan, uh, by a sort of a split screen series of reactions. On the one hand, glancing at my Twitter feed, you could see the Washington elites uh, almost laughing at the speech. You know, people asking, is this over yet? Uh, one person saying, if anybody says that he's presidential, I'm going to be sick. Uh, but on the other hand, you could follow the live commentary that was being offered on some of the YouTube streams of Donald Trump's speech by his core supporters, uh, and they absolutely still adore him. I mean, it would be a mistake for Democrats to write him off, but equally, any Republican that wants the presidential nomination is going to have to find a way of co-opting his supporters, right? Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, ultimately general elections and what we saw in the midterms, there is no doubt that Donald Trump is extremely powerful. He has core supporters within the Republican Party. He has supporters even within those that don't support all of his policies and claims. But general elections, midterm elections are won by independent voters at the end of the day. And even if he does win the primaries and knocks everyone out of the field, is Donald Trump the candidate that's going to run against possibly, let's say, Joe Biden, if not someone else? Is he going to be able to convince the independent voter of America uh, that he deserves another chance? I think that's the main question. But in terms of Republicans, I think if he becomes the nominee, they are going to rally around him. Susan Terrani, live for us in New York, Weon's U.S. correspondent. Thanks for that. For more on all of this, I'm joined now by Mark Mirowitz, uh, professor at State University of New York Maritime College, who is joining us live from New York City. He specializes in American history, American foreign policy and constitutional law. Dr. Mirowitz, thanks very much for being with us today. I thought Hi. it was striking last night that Donald Trump did not threaten to pull funding from Ukraine provided by the United States. What did you read into that? Well, I'd just like to go a little bit more broadly than that. And the most important thing and the takeaway here is the headline in the New York Post, which is a Murdoch, very important Republican newspaper today, which gave no news headline other than Florida man makes announcement with a tiny little article on page 26 that a retiree in Florida announced he was going to be president. In other words, the Republican Party is underwhelmed by Trump, not overwhelmed by Trump, and in fact, annoyed by his early announcement which, frankly, Simon, will tank and destroy the entire Republican Party if he runs. This is a game changer, clearly, in American politics. Trump doesn't take any responsibility for the very weak showing in the midterms. 
He doesn't take any responsibility for what he did in connection with the elections. And all he's doing is the same old mantra, which frankly is falling on deaf ears, especially in the leadership of the Republican Party, which does not want Trump to run. Now, truthfully, Biden's performance has been underwhelming as well. So right now we have a tricky situation. But the key element is DeSantis, the rise of DeSantis, and Trump sees that. So the speech was not comedic, really. It was really somewhat angry and vengeful. I'm going to get back. I'm going to show you I'm going to return. And that is problematic in American politics. And I think it's a no starter, in my opinion. Well, but but it isn't a non-starter, is it? I mean, even in the polling that's being done, he's still the second ranked candidate for the presidential nomination in Iowa, New Hampshire, Georgia uh, and Florida. And there are some polls nationally that still place him the first ranked candidate among Republicans to be the party's presidential nominee. I that's mean, it would be mad at this stage, surely, simply to write him off and pretend that he doesn't exist. I'm not writing him off. I'm telling you what the pulse of how Republicans are thinking about this. Understand the situation. If Trump does not get the Republican nomination, he will run as a third party. And ergo, he will tank and destroy the Republican candidate, supposing that's DeSantis. You are right that the present poll today, the Politico took, said that Trump had 47 percent and DeSantis had 33 percent among Republicans. But polls do change. Polls change. The problem is the baggage that Trump brings. And I would say that an interesting letter to the editor in the Wall Street Journal, and this goes to your point, where a Republican writes that he feels Trump should move along, but but if but if you know he's the candidate, he'll vote for him. Now that is not very enthusiastic. I don't think that Republicans, mainstream Republicans, I'm not talking about the MAGA Republicans or the Republicans who feel that the election was rigged, which is ridiculous, right, will not support him. And in fact, what he had last night that you so aptly dis dis described was a pep show, a pep, you know, pep talk for Donald Trump, uh, all about him. You asked about Ukraine. You asked about, there's no question that Trump had accomplishments in foreign policy. That's true. But the January 6th dis disaster really um, muddied and, and, and destroyed his legacy, whatever it was. And even Republicans saw, not in terms of the election alone. By the way, with Pence, Pence has a book coming out. And in his book, he says Trump was reckless in not being concerned about Trump's welfare, about Pence's welfare, when Pence was in the Congress and the and the uh, the rioters were coming in after Pence, so there's a lot of baggage here, including what you talked about in the investigations, these numerous investigations. By the way, if you listened last night, he made a comment, Trump. This is just extraordinary. He said he had his son stand up, Eric, and he said, "My son." has more subpoenas than Al Capone. I don't know if you're familiar with Al Capone, but he was one of the leading gangsters and mobsters in American history. He also mentioned Jesse James and Billy the Kid, who were famous outlaws in the Wild West. So this is his evaluation of his son, that he gets lots of subpoenas, lots of legal proceedings. This is not an atmosphere that is conducive to solving the many problems that we have. So I think that the America, many Americans are moving on. They're looking for some other leadership. That would be true in the Democratic Party too. Many Democrats are quite reluctant about Biden being the candidate because Biden and Trump would be the, you know, they're the oldest, uh, would be the oldest president in American history. So I think we need new leadership. And frankly, DeSantis with his, as you said, double digit, win in Florida shows the possibility of how a governor runs a state and has ability. And the problem would be if Trump overshadows him. That would be very, very bad. 
Dr. Mirowitz, I hope you'll come back on the program again. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. That's Mark Mirowitz, a professor at the State University of New York Maritime College, uh, joining us live there from New York. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with Thank us. Thank you.